Hey fellas, um, welcome to my messy modeling workbench. <laughs> Dear lord, uh, was getting ready to do some airbrushing and base brushing and whatnot on this lovely Colossus burst for a friend who donated to my last charity stream and I was in the middle of like plugging up the party the, the hollowing holes and whatnot and unfortunately it uh, the base split that's fine I can easily fix that it's not a problem but um, this video is not about this this video is about airbrushes so let me just move that out the way for a second and explain what I mean okay so let me move these two like I said, I've got quite a lot of models to, to do on my bench. And um, it's about these little suckers. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I am going to move this one in. Because you're going to see a lot more with this camera than you are with the other one. So, this right here is a cheap airbrush I got from Amazon. And you can usually get them for about twenty pounds. And the best part about these cheap little airbrushes is they come in a kit, a kit like this. Now, this kit comes in so many different names. This one's called Timber Tech. They don't longer exist. Like I said, it was a one, it was a one-off brand thing. But I wanted, I wanted to go through and do some basic maintenance on my airbrushes. And so, long story short, as you can see, this one. Uh, clearly does get used a lot more than this one and there's a reason why um, I'm going to show you the, the difference between a very well maintained airbrush and a very poorly maintained airbrush now what I mean by that is as you can see this cup has barely been used at all yeah I'll, I'll even bring some more light into the situation okay now as you can see this cup has barely been used versus this cup that still has paint all over it because this is my go-to airbrush now the reason why I stopped using this airbrush is because of this now you're probably thinking wait the trigger works just fine no actually the trigger doesn't work let me just fix the zoom real quick it's for some reason it is auto focusing and I've told Logitech not to do that Give me one second. And so, long story short, I, I have customized the trigger um, so I can have more precise control over it because this used to be my very fine detail uh, airbrush. Now, a good airbrush should sound like this. the double clunk that clunk clunk hey this airbrush you need that twing that's the spring inside uh, um, not doing its job now what I mean by that is if you're smart <laughs> be very careful when you take the cup tips off because you're exposing the needle but if you look and you pull it in it doesn't pull the needle all the way through okay so that tells me that the needle is not retracting all the way now that could be a number of reasons okay it could be another reason is that the trigger is also sticking okay it's not as responsive see, as this one so clearly there is something mechanically wrong with with the airbrush now the first thing I would suggest to people to do is to check your, uh, in essence, this is what's known as a triggerable Schrader valve. Now, if you own a bicycle or a motorbike or a car, they all come with what's called Schrader valves on the tires, where you push down, put air in, release, a plunger comes back and stops the air from coming back in. That's called a Schrader valve. Well, inside this Schrader valve is a spring. Now, you can get a specialty screwdriver 
that slots in to that slots into the hole. I'm trying to do it so you can actually see what I'm talking about. There's a uh, inside here. There's two little hole prongs. You can get. You can buy a specialty screwdriver for a Schrader valve. Unfortunately, I don't have one, so I can't tell if the spring is if the spring is responding. Now this spring also responds. Now what you can do is do what I just did, which is so I know that the spring rate's good. So we also know that this airbrush is my, my good airbrush. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take swap out the Schrader valves. Like so. And tighten it. And then press. Nope, it's not the Schrader valve. Because the Sh Schrader valve is what puts the spring pressure back on the trigger. So we know it's not the Schrader valve. Okay. So that's in the clear that's that's good that's in the clear okay so i can put my other schrader valve back on so we know it's not a schrader valve okay so then let's take a look at anything else so first things first what i'm going to do is disassemble the rear and see if it does it again snaps back just fine but you see now it's jammed it doesn't do i literally have to physically force it up again but that tells me that there is something mechanically wrong this side of the airbrush not this side so i don't have to look at tips i don't have to look at anything like that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to extract the needle now i'm not going to touch the needle just yet okay no the needle's not bent this just happens to be sitting on a nail so it looked like the needle was bent but it's not bent at least i don't think it's bent so and that's another thing you can check is you can check to see if the needle's bent what I'm going to do is I'm going to unscrew the back string tensioner, the uh, spring tensioner, sorry. And inside here is a spring. Now, this is quite dirty and there is a bit of rust build up, which is kind of weird. There shouldn't be rust build up. There's also a bit of build up on the actual sides of the trigger. And so I think we might have found what our issue is. Our issue is either the trigger or it's back here. So what we can do is we can clean the parts very thoroughly with some isopropyl alcohol, which I have right here. And I just punched something off my table. And I'm going to use a bright red, bright red uh, uh, cloth. And what we can do is we can do a bit. IPA 99%. Give it a clean, including threads. Be careful when you are doing the threads because they're going to catch on the, the microfiber cloth. Because coarse versus smooth, you're going to have them crash. Now, another thing you should also look at is take a look at any. Um, scratches, nicks, dents, cracks, things of that nature, because everything mechanical will require repairs. Now, I'm going to just go through and quickly do another take on the needle, because I can feel some debris on the needle, which means that's dried up paint or dried up clear coat, things of that nature. That will prevent it from going smoothly. Now, I know a long time ago, older airbrushes, there's a reason why older airbrushes um are honestly in my personal opinion are worth more than newer airbrushes and the reason being is older airbrushes used a teflon style ring system um in the tips ah so we do have a bent tip okay this tip is bent so that's good to know so that needle is only going to be used useful for uh, other things, but mostly cleaning, but not actually good for airbrushing. And what I mean by that is, back here, this is what's known as the tip head. Okay, and that tip head just fell out, so that's clearly not good. Oh, that's why it's busted. The threads are gone. You're supposed to be able to thread thread them in 
Um, case in point, I've actually got some spare needles and heads in here, so uh, I'm thinking about take turning that into my close close up uh, system. So, and you don't want to mix heads and needles. There's a reason why they come numbered. So 0 0.5, 0 0.2. You don't want to mix them up. So we've got the 0 0.5 tip. So where's my 0 0.5 needle? There's my 0.5. Okay. And so what you want to do is take your old stock head, which is now no good because the stock needles, uh, needles bent and the stock tip is snapped. Because inside here, it's going to come with its own tip, tip and point. Case in point, that's the bad one. As you can see, it is marginally shorter. And that's the good one. As you can see, there's a thread to it. You see, so in fact, I'll, I'll ironically, okay, good, bad, okay, so we're going to put that in the junk pile. Now I'm going to check to see if the thread is still there or not, where I need to use my unique little headset with the magnifier. I can just quickly double look. There appears to be no thread inside. That's good news. That's really good news because that means I don't have to break out my micro apps. <clears throat> and then now you're also going to need a special kind of little wrench. Now, when you buy these airbrushes, they come. The wrench comes with them. Okay, and that's these little guys. Okay. Now I've got tons of these little buggers. But uh, you're, you're, you always lose them. And so what I'm going to do now is screw in very carefully and very gently. You don't want to wrench these on. These are like spark plugs in a car engine. You don't want to wrench the suckers in too tight. You just want to turn it gently to you feel a little bit of resistance. Half a turn, then stop. That's it. New needle tips in. New front cup is on. Now... To differentiate the fact that I've put a new different cut type of needle and tip into this brush, not only does it have a separate trigger, I'm now going to swap out the front guard. Now, what I mean by that is when you are more into airbrushing like I am than some people, um, you're going to want different cup tips. Now, a lot of people always keep asking me what good are cup tips? Well, I'm about to show you. This is what's known as a fixed distance type, okay? And if you look at it, it's got a specific, it comes with O-rings. Um, now, that's another good thing. Always keep these extra O-rings because you're going to need them. You always want to keep these O-rings. Now, um, as you can see, this package is brand new. It's still sealed. Uh, I got this on Amazon. You can buy them in packs of three for like £10, free shipping. Um, this one is set for a, a fixed distance type. This is good for, for, for base airbrushing. So if you're if you're trying to get into modeling and you don't want to keep buying cans of compressed air and and overpriced primers and you don't want to go and you don't have a Halfords or a Walmart or whatever near you to buy cheap primer, um, this is a good alternative. You can always get a different cup tip, put the tip on it, Swap out the needle. Now, bear in mind, this cup tip does not go with this needle type, okay? Because this is a 0.5, which means it's ultra fine, okay? So what I'm going to do is either go to my open... I believe, yeah, this is a, a hollow type. It's an open type, and this one is what's known as an axe type. Now, axe types are usually what you see professionals use when they're airbrushing uh, extreme close detail on, like... Um, van art pinstriping um various things like that because you can get a lot of in close like a, a lot of 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 in close detail to your miniature and just get it to where you need it with very minimal overspray um so that's the sort of tip i'm looking at going for so i'm gonna take this one out so we're gonna open this up we're gonna get the tip out now, you can put an O-ring on it, or not. It's entirely up to you. I know some people that, that 
that don't put o-rings on them i know some people that do my ocd is going to go nuts like that um it, it's entirely up to uh you as an airbrush artist um you will if you don't put um an o-ring on there there's a high chance you're going to get build up and splatter on the bottom part of your your um uh, uh airbrush so what i'm going to do like i said is I'm, I'm not wrenching these on super tight i'm only putting these on hand tight and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take one of these o-rings from this set and we're going to o-ring it now that way i know mechanically forward on this airbrush is going to be mechanically sound okay now you can buy cheap uh o-ring sets from like family dollar and places like that or pound land here in the uk um this is a, a pro again this is a, also another issue with with, with uh, specific o-rings sometimes they don't fit as well sometimes they're overly snug oh there we go beautiful first time Take first time all right and so my ocd is not going to go overboard beautiful so we are set now i need to take a look at this trigger and what i mean by that is i'm now going to take a look at everything that is um trigger related and i'm going to go through now i do have some specialty brushes that are designed to clean uh, airbrushes but wouldn't you bloody believe it i went to find them to make this video and they grew legs and like um it's always the way you know when you're about to make a youtube video and that's going to be seen by about 30 people and it you know grows legs and gets a freaking pierce you know story of my life as they say so what i'm gonna do and i don't suggest you do this okay so guys don't don't necessarily do this is i'm going to grab some baby wipes now the reason why i say you shouldn't grab baby wipes is because they can leave lint behind inside your airbrush and lint is not good lint causes issues okay now again i'm going to use the old bent needle that we don't that, that's literally just used for 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 spare parts now um now always again be careful because they are sharp even though they're bent they're still incredibly sharp i'm using the blunt end to push this baby wipe through and get it as deep as i can because like i said normally i've got specialty brushes i can't find them so i'm probably gonna have to buy some more And what we're going to do is clean out the back end so you can still see there's, yeah, there's, there's grime and there's dirt. The another good thing for, for this is pipe cleaners. If you can find yourself a, a good pipe cleaning set, that's another good set of tools that you can use for airbrushing as a pipe cleaner. A uh, pipe cleaner. Round. Go, my Looking nice and cool. Now, there shouldn't be any paint uh, whatsoever back here. There should just be like uh, dirt and grease, which is what there is. It's just dirt and grease. So, what I'm going to do is try and is grab this WD 40 with dry PTFE. Now, the reason why you want dry PTFE and not wet PTFE is because wet PTFE will stick around. Now, I'm just going to give it a quick spruce. Go. And that also means the trigger mechanism gets a spruce. Then I take trigger. Now, again, you've got to understand from the trigger back, it's all air no paint should be back here if you if you're getting paint back here you've got a serious clog somewhere in the front and so what i'm doing now is it's still badly gripping shouldn't be doing that at all you feel like, like there's tension 
think this airbrush body might be damaged. Or well, this trigger is. Now, the end of the trigger cup is, is it's C-shaped. Best way to think of it is a, um, in an engine you've got uh, um, rocker arms. Very similar to a, uh, a stock stamped rocker. On like a Hemi or, yeah, on a Hemi. A little Hemi 340. Oh, so you even get automotive knowledge. And get that tip for free. So what I'm doing is just going to take a look at the O-ring because there is an O-ring in there as well. Again, this is where you would normally be using your proper cleaning brushes, what not, but I've known mine. I'll watch after I've finished. This video and done editing. Right. Yep. This is why you should also invest in an ultrasonic Because ultrasonic cleaners can get into places where normal... There we go. Oh. Oh, it's... Thanks. Alright, it's getting there. This trigger's gonna have to definitely be working. And that's fine. At least we're, we're, we've, we're ironing it out as to where the, the fault might be. So now I'm also going to give this spring a bit of a douse. <laughs> Typical springs. Right there. Nice. Now we're going to take our... Oh, that. That's much better. That is much better. That is how a spring trigger should be. Exactly how a spring trigger should be. There we go. <laughs> Yeah, you've got to be careful of, of, of the relief fork valve. Again, sometimes these can come off on really cheap airbrushes. And, um, I mean, to the, when I say cheap, I mean so cheap that, that uh, not even um, Wish will, um, will even sell them. Slide it in carefully like that. Now we're going to just screw it in all. Not to cross thread. If you feel resistance while, while screwing, back it out a couple of turns and come back in. That's probably dirt. Oh. Listen to that. No more ping. No more ping. All right, so we've got rid of the annoying ping. That's a good thing. Bernie Sanders says that's a good thing. Oh, Bernie, you're fake news. So we're going to slide this. I'm trying to keep it in frame, but I'm going to put the trigger back. 
There's always the fiddly bit is the trigger. Yeah, see, genuinely don't think this should be this loose. I think it's out by a couple of mil. What I might do... Not, not too hard, because you don't want to be gentle. Metal has a memory. and I don't want to pin there we go March. so again more fancier airbrushes have a lock where you can pull it back and lock it do this two handed instead of just hammering your face Because might have to just buy new. And that's another thing you can't. When it, sometimes buying parts for these generic airbrushes, sometimes it's actually cheaper just to buy a brand new airbrush. Um, but I like to keep the older ones around for parts, you know, in case like something does happen. Um. Yeah, this trigger is definitely an issue. I don't even have the shredder valve in. It does not want to. Doesn't want to. Not recommend money. What? To insert these correctly, sorry about that, to insert these correctly. Again, like before, gently hand thread it. Feel any resistance like I am right here, back it off a couple of turns. Go back in, yeah, so that tells me that there's uh, a machining issue with this area. Right. Awesome. Put our trader valve. Ooh, much better. Much better. All right, so now we're going to put our new needle in. Of course, all new needles come with a protector tip. Slide the tip off. I'm going to give the needle a once over. Now there is some. We know that this is the old needle. Could be oils to keep it from rusting. Normally, I would use the 
like a thinner or break clean. You feel resistance, stop. I'm feeling resistance right here, so I'm going to stop. I don't know why I'm feeling resistance. I think it might be because of the machining issue, like I, I said earlier. It's literally right at a, a specific spot. Gently. Put the chuck on the end. And the needle. Go. So that tells me that there is a machining issue with this um, airbrush. So we've, we've found out what the problem is. It's not actually... It wasn't the bent needle, it wasn't the Schrader valve, it wasn't the spring system. It's got something to do with the... What I'm going to do is give it... Work it. Yes, it's... Still sticking it shouldn't be doing that as you guys know it should be snapping back I mean this trigger it's it's most likely the trigger it should be doing this see and it's not the, the trigger is there it's the motion that's not hmm I will have to do some more investigating but most importantly, guys, um, you should always do a lot of, you should always maintain your airbrushes. You know, you should always do maintenance on them, even if they're of poor quality, like this one. No, no disrespect to, to whoever manufactured this, but let's be real. Okay, Let, let's be real for a second here. Comparing this to things like my Sotar 2020 or my Badger, you know, these are literally just used till they break, then junk them. But if you're like me, you can use them until, you know, and, and, you, and you, you keep them maintained. I mean, I've had this, this airbrush here, I've had this for about four or uh, three years now, and I've had this one... But just as long. So if I remember correctly, I got them together as a deal. Um, and they're from the same manufacturer. So clearly something's gone wrong. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the needle out because I don't want to risk damaging the needle. Figure out why... why it's doing this uh, so yeah guys uh, i hope you enjoyed the video uh, some of you guys did say that you wanted to see some more videos of me painting miniatures and, and going over so I figured what the hay, I'm getting ready to put some primer down on that Colossus and, and fix up any of the missing print issues and alignment issues. And
Danke. Again, because I don't have the specialty screwdriver that's needed, as you can see, there's two air relief valves there that also act as a screw boss. Alright, so I think I found what the issue is. Yeah, I'm going to have to get some... Alright guys, I'll probably do an update video to this. Um, so yeah, thanks. Okay, so I did do a little bit of cleaning. I swapped out, as you can see, I found my brushes. I did do a little bit of cleaning. Sorry about the background noise, guys. I'm watching the TV show. And uh, so. Long story short, you can see the trigger works and. We are retracting, so we are good. Still got that ping, so that tells me that there is something mechanically wrong with the brush, airbrush. And so I figured I would get a test spray going for you guys. Uh, give me a second, guys, so I can actually pause the show so you guys aren't distracted by one of the Baldwin's beautiful beautiful voices and so what I'm going to do is use some Teflon tape this is simple plumbers TFT Teflon tape um, it's used for plumbing and various other things it's also used for airbrushes to maintain seals airbrush presser doesn't randomly start burping and farting farting and burping Yep. So, what I'm going to do is do this. Ready? Turn my compressor on. It'll build up pressure. Ooh, nice. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab um, polyurethane primer. Just give it a bit of a jiggle. Grab some gloves. Ready to do some model surgery. <laughs> this is where I'm gonna also you guys so you can see. Talking about in fact Now, I know the trigger's going to be a little bit of a pain in the ass. It's a given. All right, so. It's just simple um, Vallejo 
black primer straight from the bottle. Cool. See? We're going to go big splat, see? And that's the difference. And we've got no drippage underneath, which is good. I'm going to grab now. My compressor doesn't have a tank, so you're going to have to. <laughs> up with the uh, compressor per for a bit and just like that we have primed Miniature. Or the base, anyway. And as you can see, there are some holes that I need to fill in with some modeling pipe. So, but even just the slightest crack, and you're getting paint now. Ultimate control. Big splat, big splat, big splat, big splat, okay. so you can do it guys, uh, and again like I said this is my broken, what was broken, and this is my non-broken uh, airbrush, so now, now I am back to two fully working airbrushes, what I will do is uh, mark on the back that this is a five mil this is a two mil this is an even finer uh this is an even finer tip uh this is used for priming as you can see but you can do more delicate lines you know as you can see you can do is a lot of delicate lines and that's the whole point is uh is the ability to do that so what i'm going to do quickly is just end out the rest of this primer okay so now i'm gonna rinse this now a lot of people like to use um rubbing alcohol things of that 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 like i just use straight up vallejo uh, airbrush cleaner uh, no, not sponsored <laughs> before anyone asks. So, got my own little hairbrush pot cleaner. Even even with aftermarket tips, still works just fine. Now, get a blowback. Lovely. Now I'm going to hit it with some okay. Your air now. Good. 
now. I'm just going to go through with baby wipe up. What I tend to do is leave the baby wipe in there for a bit. What that does soaks up any other excess paint residue, and then uh, we're good to go. So yeah, our airbrushes are now back up and running, which is good because it means we'll be able to do more uh, modeling. A video tutorials and stuff for you guys i like the fact that we've still got to finish off this bloodthirster and with the release of agron i figured what the hell hell why not and so uh, we will be finishing up this bloodthirster and well it's my um representation of or not uh so we've got that and then we've also got mortirion who's been stuck in primer now for about a year and he's screaming, paint me, paint me, dude, paint me. And so, yeah, uh, look forward to seeing how I'm going to be painting my Mortarion for my Death Guard army, along with one of these, this Nurgle Corrupted Chaos Knight. Yeah. Going to be fun painting this, this guy up. So, yeah. So yeah, guys, look forward to start seeing that. They'll be on the bench soon. Uh, and then after we've done a bit of Death Guard, knocked down some of the larger models like Dreadnoughts, like Mortirion, like the um, Chaos Knight, I'm going to switch over to my... Most likely switch over and start knocking out some of my... Uh, German infantry and uh, German vehicles for uh, <laughs> bolt action. You know, change it up a little bit. Uh, but like I said, guys, look forward to start seeing some work being done on Colossus here. And this is for uh, Crypto Viper. Crypto, thank you, my friend, for uh, uh, you know, helping out in the last charity drive. Bad boy is on the bench. They will be filling in uh, all the. Uh, Drainage holes and not here in a bit. Starting to put together lots of statuette for you. Uh, I even went ahead, and ordered some Mayeho uh, chromium set. This is quite literally just for this Colossus miniature, um, and so, like I said, it is airbrushable. So uh, we will see uh, what we do. Uh, with the, in the airbrushes, uh, and if they turn out good, it also means I can start my Necron arm as well. I look forward to seeing that, guys. Uh, so, yeah, we've uh, hope you enjoyed the uh, fix and maintenance and maintaining and, and little bench update. Till guy, till then, guys, keep shows fine, keep your enemies dying. The Cobra Commander is out, guys. Hey guys, uh, I'm not even sure if I'm going to be using the audio on this. I figured I'd watch a couple of episodes of Star Trek Picard and uh, get some primer on this Colossus. Bit of shake. I am using Vallejo. Surface Primer. And grab.
grab a, a brush. So what we're gonna do? Ooh, that's not good. That is not good.